I'm so tap tap, and I finally got a Nintendo Switch, and it was like not overpriced. Amazing. Anyway, let's play Kamiko. So the Switch, the number one best thing about the Switch, is that it's a Nintendo thing, where I can just sit down, pick up a normal human controller, and look at a reasonable screen or TV, and nothing's like, no, look at the gamepad, no, look at the TV, look at the. Why aren't you looking at the TV? Look at the gamepad, you stupid idiot. No, pick up the Wiimote for this one. No, that controller doesn't work for this game. No, no, uh, I'm calm. I'm calm. I'm calm. It's a Nintendo console without all of the stupid bad things that Nintendo's been known for for the last, like, two generations. Which Nintendo was never known for in the past, by the way. A lot of people are like, oh, Nintendo never cared about graphics. They're all about the gimmicks. It's like, no. Nintendo 64, literally named after its freaking processor. Do you think that's something that, you know, a company that doesn't care about graphics is, you know, gonna do? Anyway, hello, Parker. He sensed that I was angry because of Wiimote. The Wiimote, it makes me upset. He, he understands. It's calming. Anyway, this is Kamiko, and it has nothing to do with any of the things I just talked about. Kamiko is this little short action RPG. It's only five bucks on the eShop. It's, I believe, still pretty much the cheapest game on Switch, and it's, um... Basically, it'll take you about two hours to finish, uh, which I think for five bucks is pretty okay. Oh wait, I did the wrong thing. So it's like a speedrun focused action RPG. It's got three different characters. It'll take you about 40 minutes per character for your first playthrough. Um, so we've got Swordswoman, we've got Archer, we've got Shield Sword Lady thing. I don't know exactly what you call her. But um, Yamato is pretty standard, you know, Kind of Zelda-y with some combo slashes. Pretty normal, very normal action RPG attacks. Archer is pretty much what you expect. Himone is the more interesting one, so we're gonna play as her. She kind of throws her shield and it's, it's, you'll see. Oh child of the transient world. Abrupt though this may be, thou art summoned to the realm of the dead. Thou should know that the gate, the gates connecting thine Yes, the, not the best localization, but it works. Missed a little space there, it's fine. Transient world in our realm of the dead has been sealist by demons. Uh, that's a typo, but it sounds intense. Sealist. I had my better sealist burnt. Little guy in the background going crazy. Sorry. If this goes on, if this goes on, thine transient world will become ruled by said demons. If you want to make something sound fanty, just say rulest. Just, just add st at the end of things. And humans will be led down the path to destruction. Okay, not, not on destruction, but otherwise. Before you is the Imperial Regalia, the Mirror of Yatta. This weapon has been granted to thou amongst the Shrine Maidens. You hold a special power. Bloop. Hear my words, O child of the Transient Realm. Become the Kamiko who will vanish, vanquish the demons and release the seal on the gate between worlds. They seal it. Alright. So her thing is her first attack throws a shield, which does a lot more damage, and then her little tiny sword uh, does, I think, less damage than most characters' normal attacks. But overall, she's more effective, I think, if you play her right. But she takes a bit more effort. The sword girl does less damage in general, but she hits a lot and really fast, and she's really easy to use. The archer kind of hits medium strength, and just, um, well, she fires in a straight line, which is occasionally problematic. Um, so in this game, there's a lot of carding one thing back and forth to another thing. Oh, right. I don't, I can't use that key yet, I think. Basically, your health is those little red gems at the top right there, or left, whatever direction that is. Your um, energy meter is raised by defeating enemies. So even though it's speedrunny, you gotta bandage how many enemies you defeat, and you get more energy the more combos you do. So you need energy to uncurse those uh, shrines like we just did there. And um, enemies constantly respawn, and actually it's fairly often a good idea to just not to defeat the enemies. Oh, here we go. Sometimes you'll need to do stuff before you can use a key or so on. Actually, it's damage here. Oh, and there's some mild secrets. I think you're actually required to go over here. And every, every chest costs 50, and every shrine to unseal costs 100. That just expanded our little shield thingy. I think 
This is a yeah. So there's two types of keys, basically. Orbs need to be set on a special pedestal, and um, keys need to go into a locked door, of course. And this goes back... Uh -oh. You can't attack while carrying the orbs around. It's one of the tricksier bits of things. You just kind of gotta slip around things. Enemies aren't super aggressive, so it's usually not too rough. It depends on the enemy, really. The, the wasps are as aggressive as the average pizza, I would say. Um, but yeah, pots always drop a health. Bushes sometimes. So this is the sort of game, like I said, it's, it's kind of focused around speedrunning. I haven't seen speedruns of it. I just played it myself, and it seems, uh, it seems like speedruns could be pretty cool. I haven't, I'm not usually the, the person to replay. Personally, play, replaying with the three characters was enough for me. Um, also, this game got some pretty brutal reviews, mostly because of length. Like, I think length is really the only major complaint one can have with this game. But I think anytime you're reviewing something and you want to complain about length, I do think that um, price is a very valid inclusion. Like, there's two kind, there's two sides to that coin, right? Sometimes some people think that oh, you shouldn't, you should never review based on like money. You know, because I mean, prices drop and people have different values of money, you know. But you gotta consider that, like, this is a cheap $5 game. This is not, you know, you can't say that, oh, this was short, when you would say that, like, a 60, if a $60 game is two hours, that's a problem. A $5 game is two hours? I don't think that's a problem. So I think you do have to consider what type of game it is and all that sort of stuff. I think five bucks for two hours, I mean... The, the standard comparison is, you know, to a movie. Movies are what, like eight bucks? I haven't seen a movie in years. I'll be to be completely honest. I think the last time I went to see a movie in theaters, uh, I think it was the Scott Pilgrim movie, which, which, how many years ago was that? Like seven, eight? It's, it's a lot. But I'm not really a big fan of movies. I can't just sit in one place for three hours. The only reason I can stay in streams is because I'm playing video games and I have people to talk to and stuff. So what we saw there, the once you clear four of the gates, you unlock a little thing. Uh, See, so yeah, we're still missing one. Also, little secret here. There's four secret items, one in each area, and um, you, you really don't know where they are except for there'll be a little A prompt like we just saw there when you get it. Uh, they're usually in mildly suspicious places. After the first playthrough, I got zero of them and was like, how the heck do you find these stupid things? Once I accidentally stumbled into that one, I started looking for like suspicious places, and if you know to look, you'll, you'll find them eventually. It didn't take me particularly long. And once you unlock all of them, you get the uh, sound test. And the music's quite good, by the way. So, uh, sound test is a worthy reward. I always liked when stuff like you know, you give a little extra something when you 100% complete the game, and you know, I, I think a sound test, like a music test, is a pretty good option for that. Like, uh, Kirby Superstar was the first game where I had to play that, and it's like, I really love the music in that game. So I think sound tests and concept art are pretty good unlocks for when you can't, when you don't have like something like really gameplay related or a new game plus. Also, when I first played through this game, I thought this was like some sort of choice thing, and so I just left. The, the, I like, I wanted more health, so I just left the other item. You can get both, don't be stupid like me. So we've got the standard Nintendo boss here. Face with the, uh, the hands. Every, every Mario has to have one of these. So this game, this is basically Mario that we're playing. Yeah, I think Galaxy has one too, doesn't it? I don't know why that's such a thing. Aw, oh, come on, dude. You gotta get him to, yeah, there you go. Hammer on the thing. Oh right, and we have a special skill that I have no reason to use in this battle, but I will anyway. Oh wait, you have to have your shield with you. Oh, it's kind of harder for her to do the shield. Oh, I'll do it for this, okay. Hers is actually not that great unless you're surrounded by a lot of enemies. Uh, so that was basically a complete waste and stupid for me to do, but I want to show it off. I honestly forget to use it for her. Uh, I really like the... Um, worst I've ever done this boss, by the way. I blame me talking. It's underrated how much, like, talking for a Let's Play can affect your gameplay. I noticed that especially in, uh... 
You can apparently do that so slow that he resets it. I honestly had no idea of that. I've never had him do that in the three, four, at least four times I fought this boss. I've never had him do that. It's sad. I'm just gonna focus on the boss for a second. There we go. He's not hard or anything. You just gotta, you know, don't talk like an idiot and waste your time doing special skills that are not actually designed to be used in this context. You heard special skill is actually really good if there's like a huge horde of enemies, which there usually is in, um, in areas. Um, she can actually, I think it costs 100 or maybe 150. No, it's only 100. Um, oh right, I gotta do the thing. Um, it only costs 100. So this is what happens when you talk. Um, um, but yeah, you do that and it costs like 100 energy. And if there's a lot of enemies, you can very easily um, cause or earn over 100 energy from it. So. It's one of the better ones, uh, maybe. The problem hers has is it will never hit the same area twice, so it's never useful for bosses. Or not particularly useful for bosses, anyway. That was by far the worst I've ever done from that boss. I think this one might be the favorite. I'm a big fan of pixely rain. I love rain in video games in general. It's most of the good things about rain, but with none of the bad things. Like, I don't have to drive in this rain with a bunch of other idiots. By the way, please, robot cars, immediately. So I've, I've heard the concerns about, about, you know, AI and, you know, weird edge cases. I have also seen regular humans, you know, just completely not know what a turn signal is and immediately dash into the wrong lane and going the wrong way. Uh, I've, I see people going the wrong way. I go down several one way. Uh, one ways, and I see somebody going down the wrong way, uh, maybe every couple months, and it's bad. I don't think I can actually, no, I can't use this yet, so let me drop that. So it's a very specific order, uh, in speedrunning, the one thing I don't think I would ever be good at in speedrunning is routing. Uh, what am I, what am I doing? See, that, that leads you up to the pedestal where you need the orb. Came there for no reason. So you have to get that switch first. Even when playing Bunny Must Die, which I've beaten, what, maybe 15 times at least? Um, I still occasionally forget some things. It's one of those games you can only open chests from the front. Like, real life, which sucks. I hate real life. Anyway. Yeah, I really like the... It's just a very tranquil stage with little trees in the water. The weird, ominous... I love the, the ruins, I love the, the implicit lore. I like when games are a little... Oh, right. Now it's- the freaking rain is gone. I was just talking about how I like the rain, but yes, we must murder the rain in order to, uh... The little sun shafts on the left are a nice touch, though, but yeah. That's right, Parker! I don't know if you can hear him. It's being loud. So we need a key for there. A sneaker in here. I love when a game just has this believable feeling world and, you know, lots of unique aspects to it. It doesn't necessarily have to be great. Like, everybody talks about story. I'm more about, I guess, lore and world building. I don't think the story is necessarily an important thing, but like, having a world feel interesting, I, feel, I find that more important. This button. Buttons are very important to my people. I actually did a couple live streams on my Switch already, so this is not exactly the first thing where I talk about the Switch, but um, it's the first where I'm not like talking to chat and stuff. Like, anytime I'm talking to chat, I will not necessarily say what I mean to say. But yeah, I've been enjoying the Switch. It's been uh, there's not much on it, obviously. It's you know new console. It's pretty much it's to be expected. But at the same time, we kind of all expected that you know. Oh God, so this is one of the trickier bits. Um, you have to... you have exactly enough time to make it across this. Oh, I, I really did not think I was gonna make it because of, I took that hit. You really... like I said, you have exactly enough time and no more to make it across that. Um, I'm not sure I can use that right. I actually... No, I'm, I need to do this part first. It's easy to take a lot of damage, but there is a lot of health around if you know what you're doing. Also. This is the one puzzle that really got me. There's a there's a block behind that tree. I got stuck for maybe for a couple of minutes on that, which feels like a lot. 
for how small the areas are. And I was like, there's two buttons, but how do I do the thing? There was just a block there. You can see it behind the tree, it's just I wasn't looking for it. It's kind of dumb because, I mean, the, there's other block puzzles and you, you always have to have another block for a puzzle like that. So I should have been looking more carefully for a block. And there are the, there's the scratches on the ground that indicate a, a switch or a block has been around. But I just didn't notice it. Also, you can save at any of those points. It's not really so egregiously long that you'd ever really need to, you know, stop and take a save break. But you can, if you stop playing, it, it also auto-saves. So you can just... Uh, yeah, you'll just return to whatever shrine you last unlocked. where this key goes. I think it goes down. This is why I would not be good. This is why I'm not good with routing aspect of run game fast thing. But I'm sure that that's something that just comes with practice and you know just knowing a game incredibly well. I just don't really have the time to play that. To play pretty much anything that much. I barely have time to play the game. I don't have time to play the games I actually want to play for the first time. So even though I really enjoyed Bunny Must Die and I like doing the runs of it. I had to uh, cut that out, at least for now. Um, is that all of them? I'm forgetting. I feel like I'm missing something. I am missing something. Uh, did I go and get this? Oh, of all the stupid things to miss, I was right here. It may seem like you always have enough stuff, but my, my first playthrough, I did not. I often ran out of energy stuff. It's just, you, you gotta train yourself to... Like, you see big groups of enemies and you want to clear that out. You don't have to defeat everything in your way, but you do want to kind of keep your energy up. Also, building up energy should you need to do it in a boss fight is really unpleasant. So, it mostly only matters for the final boss. The, the final boss you truly do need energy. Like, you are actually required to use your skill. But all the other ones, it doesn't really matter. It actually is a little bit helpful for this one, though. For this particular character, anyway. So I'll try to get out just a little bit. Also, a neat inclusion of the teleports as a gameplay mechanic instead of just, you know, traversal in this particular region. So he's gonna... I'm actually not sure if I can hit it until it separates. I forget exactly. So this character is really bad at fighting this particular boss because of that aspect. Oh, here we go, okay. And this one is actually different in each of its three phases. The last boss was a little bit plain. As you can see, the, the core is a coward. So we have to- oh. Crap. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that was a little embarrassing. Yeah, the core is a coward, so you gotta, gotta warp over. Unfortunately, you lose a little bit of time every time you teleport, which feels bad because of the speedrun aspect. It's like, I'm not gonna get a great time, so I shouldn't worry about it. But yet I do. Oh! There we go. Okay. Oh wait, no, this isn't the boss I was thinking of. Um, the boss I was thinking of where you, where the, the shield thing comes in handy is a later one, where the, the core kind of spins around all over, and it's a good compliment for your, um, shooty thingy. Also, it keeps really good records of your um, best times and all that. I'll, I'll try to show, remember to show you that after we beat the game. Also, there's certain routing stuff, like sometimes you have to break a path through with your sword before you can take a key through, because you can't attack while you're using a key. The game does a pretty good job of telegraphing where there's uh, hidden items and so forth. Also, I really like the pixel art style of this. I'm not usually a big fan of the, you know, the super low res. I guess most people would say 8 bit, even though it's not really well. Honestly, now that I think about it, this game is more 8 bit than most games that claim to be 8 bit. But I think this uses the art style in a really cute way that most. Um, attempted super retro things try to be like. Uh, it just feels 
nice. Um, like, Mighty Gunvolt, like, it's not bad pixel art, but I feel like this just has a better style to it. That's another thing I've been playing on my Switch, so just a quick second. These, these are the five games I own on my Switch. Kimiko, Graceful Explosion Machine, K-Story Plus, Mighty Gunvolt, Burst, and Zelda. Oops. I'm not entirely used to how the home button works. I also really like that they managed to, um... They pretty much removed the power button, which on the 3DS is like an extremely dangerous and frankly bad button. Uh, it's really never particularly necessary that the power button is there, and if you press the power button on the 3DS, it'll immediately close your software if you happen to be out of the menu. Um, I've lost progress in Pokemon to that, and making me lose progress in Pokemon. You, you don't do that. That is... That is... That is bad. Um... This one's pretty tight, too. Um... It just makes everything go through the off -hard. Yeah, we can probably... Yeah. Um... Or so I don't think- I'm not sure falling in the water actually even hurts you. Um, I think I just- I think I took a hit from the enemy, right? Yeah, that one's, I think, even tighter, because it's a shorter gap. Um, forget what I was talking about. I guess just that the pixel art looks good and has some style to it. Oh, right. The, these, um... Oh wait, no, I was talking about the power button. See, I think the power button design, the, the general oh, operating system design, feels like just a good modern operating system thing. Uh, there's no weird metaphors, there's no dumb extra crap. Like, I never like. I, I always hated the uh, the channel thing in Wii. It's like, it's so cute, it's like a TV thing, because it's a remote. And then, like, it's just, there's so few things per screen, and it's such a pain, you always have to use the... Wiimote or pointing. I, I hate I hate pointing things at my screen. It's dumb and bad. And people who make you do it should feel bad. I don't think I can. Yeah. So there's a few things where you're gonna have to go out and press the switch first. Like I was saying earlier. I always forget this one and bring the key. Hold on, there's stuff. I usually just I usually just run through that. Not really a big deal to take that one hit there. And slowing down. It's just, it's just not worth it. It's probably some exact, you can just probably wait for some exact cycle and so forth. It's nice to have a Nintendo console that just doesn't have anything frankly particularly wrong with it, which I think is a rarity at this point in time. It just plays games and it does it well and it's just fine. It's just lovely. Uh, even the 3DS, I don't particularly like. It, it hurts my hands. And I do, I did get the Nintendo, the Pro Controller. Uh, the Joy-Cons, uh, as I kind of expected, they, they kind of hurt. I know a lot of other people don't think they do. If, you, if you're fine with the 3DS, you're probably fine with the Joy-Cons. If you're not, you're probably not. They're uh, very similar in size. Excuse me. Those guys are extremely annoying to defeat with her. Her sword is... Her shield actually dispatches a lot of enemies even faster than most characters. But uh, there's a select few that are more annoying with her. There's, there's trade-offs with all of the different characters. I think the archer is probably my least favorite, but she's alright. The, um... I think Yamato, the, the sword girl, is pretty, pretty standard, pretty fun. I figured I would do this one because she's the more sort of interesting and unique part of the character. So unfortunately, this is this is what happens when you need to grind. Uh, not too bad in this case. I was hoping I could keep up the combo going so I can get some even more. But they probably won't respawn in time. You can kind of keep up any combo as long as stuff is already spawned in. Uh, or has not been defeated. You can just kind of keep going for the most part, and you can keep up your combo as you can see. So the next shrine will not be a problem. 
As you can see, her, her sword, or shield, does a lot of damage. And if you hit picky enemies like those teleporting dudes, uh, you can usually defeat them in one hit. There's fairly few non-boss things that will not, that will survive more than one hit from that. And as you can see, I got max energy, just so, real quick there. It's, if you're watching your energy, it's very hard to actually run out. Speaking of energy, I should actually use my, my sword, my shield thing, in a context where it's remotely appropriate at some point. I don't really see a good opportunity to use it though. And whatever, it's fine. You're not really surrounded by extreme amounts of enemies super often. Sometimes there are, but... Even large amounts of enemies, usually not too big of a deal. You just have to know how they move. Like those little blobby eyeball things, those do not aggro to you. They just kind of wander around, so... You usually want to hug pretty close to those. Like the little Araman things, the, the eyeballs with wings, if I'm fancy. This is the guy, I think. Wait, maybe not. Wait, no, I, yeah, he's, he's the one where the uh, thing comes in handy. Conveniently, this is also the one boss where it's actually really easy to uh, gather energy. Because he's constantly spitting out those things very rapidly. I'm not sure if it's always the, the one that's off-center, but I usually aim for the one that's off-center. There we go! Yeah, the shorter you defeat all of those little thingers, the shorter the pattern will be. I think you can even stop them from firing that annoying thing. This was not the thing where that is important. Huh. I think this... Two more I forget if the final boss is a separate thing for the boss of the next area, honestly. I think it's very important in pixel art, possibly, well, in anything having a, an art style is, you know, essential. But um, I think in pixel art in particular, you really have to have a good cohesive style in mind. And I think this has really nice... Um, Implicit and but very cute, and a little bit otherworldly style kind of going on all at once. And it works really well. Um, that sort of lends it that actually good looking, you know, low bit count sort of thing. I don't even want to call it 8 bit, even if this is more 8 bit than most things that call themselves 8 bit. I don't know, I don't know why 8 bit is the one thing that everybody goes around because, like. Did 8-bit consoles even advertise themselves as being 8-bit? Like, 16-bit consoles did. Uh, Nintendo 64 obviously did, as I even mentioned before. Oh, I forgot to get the secrets! Oh, well. They weren't important. I already got the sound test. There's some cute little secrets. I'll, I'll see if I can... I forget where the other ones... I forget what the other ones kind of were. Wait. Wait, I'm stupid. How do I get to that? I was gonna go get that thing first. Oh, 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 oh. Depth of perception. There we go. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, but why 8-bit? 8-bit is not, frankly, is not a good style. Eight, most 8-bit looks like crap. Uh, and everybody loves that old 8-bit Mega Man sprite. I'm sorry, it's... It's a pretty, it's a pretty dodgy sprite. 16-bit. Um, and honestly, higher bit is where my love lies. Um, like, some of the best pixel art we didn't really get until, like, the, the Saturn and uh, PlayStation 1 era, like, Symphony of the Night, um, uh, what was that game called? What's the, 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 the rapping, like, mosquito game on Saturn? There's, this probably sounds insane to people who've never heard of Saturn, which is probably most people. But trust me, there's this game where you're this bug and he raps, and... I cannot, for the life of me, recall what it is. Also, 
for some reason, these like ancient shrines, you hit vending machines and then you open, you unlock chests, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I think 8-bit, I think limiting your color palette, which I think this does more, I think this is, this game more, it like, it tries to limit its color palette. It doesn't really try to be 8-bit, but 8-bit, I don't think that it looks particularly good. Like, it's just three colors and I color it. And those those things are really easy to re-trigger if you jump around like that. There's no real cooldown time or anything, you just have to leave the area and I'll reset. It's only really a problem your first playthrough where you'll kind of like bumble around and be like, ah, and then you bump right back into that zone again. Um, and as far as getting trapped and fighting enemies goes, it's a pretty short uh, diversion. I want to say the secret item for this area is all the way at the top. Oh god. So those guys are pretty annoying. These guys, like, as you can see, they have no aggro at all. They just wander completely randomly. Uh, these jerk wads, they move faster than you and charge towards you, but only once they're in. Like, they have a brief little aggro state. Uh, you just kind of got to watch for it. Yeah, see? And you can kind of swerve around them. They don't home directly at you, they just kind of charge in one direction and sort of slightly swerve. It's a lot about knowing how enemies act. So in, in your first playthrough, you'll drop... You'll drop the items a few more times than you would care to drop them, but it's not really a huge deal. Of all the enemies to run into. Limited color palette, I'm a big fan of. But the thing about 8-bit, it, it kind of actually makes color palettes a lot worse, because you, you only get three belt, you only get three colors plus transparency, right? So you can't really have like see the, the nice little shading on these bushes and stuff. Well I guess there there is only three colors on that bush, but you know what I mean. Sometimes you need a little bit more and like blah. I just don't like 8-bit. Just make make it 16-bit if anything. And even 16-bit, a lot of people like I need a key for that. Um, where do I get that key? I think the key, there's a key here that is like the longest trek in the game. Which makes sense because we're getting fairly oh, far. The fun thing about her shield, she can clear out like an entire enemy swarm thing in pretty much one hit. is really easy to, to mess up. There's a few different things you have to do before you can get it. Do it. Do it. And it's really easy to, uh... Wait, this isn't the key, is it? I think this is just another shrine. Where's the key, then? This is a shrine. Oh. We're less far than in this one than I thought we were. They kind of get trickier as they go on, but at the same time, you, you learn more how things work. So. It's not much really a problem. Uh, Alright, over here. Uh, wait, no? What am I thinking of? Oh, is it this? Right, right, okay. Let's see, open that thing. Some cute little light shafts, too. In this area. Oh yeah, but also a lot of people greatly overestimate what, say, 16-bit consoles were capable of. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, this could... Why would I pay money for a game that could play on Nintendo Super Nintendo? Well, for one thing, because Super Nintendo games were good, you disgusting clod. Um, but also, like, people said that about, like, Axiom Verge. It's like, uh, this, there's a lot of fancy effects 
that even games like that have that uh, SNES could not operate with. Plus the music in Axie Verge isn't even remotely chiptuned, so obviously couldn't handle that either. I think we have all of the things. Oh, right. I think it's one of these. Yeah. So as you can, we got a human for some reason. But yeah, as you can see, there's a little... It's not anything you'd really notice. There, here we go. It's not anything you'd super notice if you weren't looking for secrets. But there's always a little bit, slight bit of a tell. For what the secrets are. But yeah, there's just one secret per area. I missed at least one. Just after I say that, oh no, this isn't 8-bit, there's actually quite a few things that stick to the three color rule. I don't... I'm sure there's still some things that don't. Like, obviously the shadows, like, you know, shadows, transparency effects, there's an incredible amount of stuff that would prevent you from being actually 8-bit. People kind of forget, like, people think that just like, oh, if there's pixel art, it's obviously, it, was, it could be a Super Nintendo game. It's like, I think... Honestly, most pixel art indie games, you would be lucky to get running on, like, a PlayStation 2. It's, it's a lot more involved than you might think. I want to say there's a teleporter around here somewhere that gives me that key. I can't believe I so completely forget what I'm doing. I'm just doing this area, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 here. Okay. Now, this is a bit of a tricky run. I've been like, I think it's just allergies, not sick. My throat's been a little bit weird. I hope it's not. Ah, damn it! Of all the things to bump into, yeah. You you almost kind of want everything to be spawned in before you, um, you try a key run. Because enemies will respawn while you're bringing keys otherwise, and they might respawn in really annoying places and pretty suddenly. It's actually safe to go really close to those guys as long as you're behind them. Oh god. Excuse me. Also, hitboxes are quite small on enemies, which greatly facilitates doing this. Oh my god. See, that's why I probably should have left those guys spawned in. <laughs> Just spawned right next to where I need to be, but hey, it worked. Alright! I'm a big fan of the weird, unknowable symbols and, like, ancient but fancy technology sort of look. Big fan of that in games. Like I said, I think the pixel art look kind of amplifies that. It makes it even more up to interpretation. Which I think is a good quality in a game. You don't have time to, you know, explain everything in the world. Just make it seem interesting. Make the player want more, you know? Boss time? Alright, I think this guy has two phases. Oh, this is unexpected, O oh child of the transient world. Why dost thou follow God? For what reason doest thou believe in God? Thine silence is in itself an answer. I can only f follow my own conviction. Now come! I don't think you need, really, to follow like an 8-bit. Uh, like aesthetic completely and you know avoid effects that would not work on an NES because that limits you so much and for so little reason I just wish things would focus like not just sell everything the oh it's 8-bit it's retro dude it's like pixel art doesn't have to be retro I mean look at uh look at Slugcat look at uh Rain World Th there are zero pixel art games you know retro pixel art games that look anything like that look at Super Brothers this, this, this is a very distinct pixel art style that retro pixel art games would never really have done. You know, they, they would usually make the, the body smaller and the face bigger, or at least not, you know, that particular degree of stretchiness. Super Brother stretchiness is pretty extreme. But there's a lot of... And say, uh, Paul Robertson's art style for, like, uh, you've... Might have seen it in uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, 
Yeah, that's not something you'd see on... Those the sprites are way too big for Super Nintendo stuff. Like, you could have a boss sprite like that at most. There's a lot you can do with pixel art that is not really retro. It's just it's just an art style, and I wish people would understand that and appreciate that. And I say this both because of people who think, Oh, pixel art can't be good. And also people who think like, Oh yeah, it's got a pixel in it. It's 8-bit, dude. The Super Mario RPG is my favorite 8-bit game. All right, this is the one we need. So she's actually a little bit annoying to do the uh, thing with. She also, she's like the only one who does not actually hurt the sphere after breaking the seal. So to break that seal, you have to uh, use your charge attack, obviously. And usually the, your charge attack would just destroy the seal, or the, uh, the red sphere as well. So the other characters, like, uh, Sword Girl just like, I think she does like a big spinning slash. And, uh, uh, the, uh, the archer shoots a ton of homing missiles, but uh, she just kind of, she never hits the same spot more than once, which is the bad aspect of it. And as you can see, I did not use it intentionally at all during the main game, but, uh, the other character is a bit more fun, but I also like to conserve my energy for the shrines anyway. It's not really the worst, but it's like... It just takes a long time to use and isn't tend, doesn't tend to be worth it. So I think the combo actually matters more for um, how many points you get or how much energy you get by defeating enemies more than like the actual base. So like these boss enemies start off with one energy, but... As the combo goes up, I think it might actually be one more energy per combo, even. World's largest laser. This guy almost looks like a Reaper bot, I like it. I forget exactly who the developer is, but this is another game now. Published by uh, Circle Entertainment. They publish lots of uh, uh, 3DS and Switch uh, indie games. Japanese indie games, specifically. Like they're, they're a localization shop, I think. Actually, I think they're, they're more of a publisher than even a localization. Their, their localizations aren't usually amazing, like, English-wise, but they're great games, and that's what's important. How oh, splendid, O oh child of the transient world. Perhaps our battle is just another play in the hands of those who are gods. That's what you get from breaking the fourth wall. You get freaking animated lasers before you explode. Who even had the... Who was the first, like, game or show or whatever that had those, like, light beams coming out of the body before it explodes? It's not, like, a thing, but it's very dramatic and neat. For some, I can recall seeing it is Mega Man, but it's probably not the first first. Can thou hear mine voice, O child of the transient world? Thanks to mine valiant efforts, the demons have been slain to waste, and the heavens and earth are once more connected. Listen well, child, it's no longer sealed. The sound of the human singing your praises echoes across the realm. There's a lot of antlers involved in, in this religion. There's the little humans. So yeah, that was Kamiko. Um, there's three other characters. Oh, you can see the sort of like, those were like hollow, like sphere things. You can see them playing around in the, <laughs> that looks like a giant guinea pig on the little spit roast thingy there. It's probably not, but <laughs> giant guinea pigs, also known as, I guess, regular pigs. And thus, oh child of the transient world, we shall leave that Imperial Regalia in your care for a while longer. Are you gonna be a magical girl for longer? As a Kamiko, thou shalt travel the world discovering things that are yet unknown. We too shall continue to practice this world from now on. Yeah, my throat's definitely getting lurky. 
I really hope uh, frickin' somebody at work was sick and like was throwing up and stuff. Not at work, but... And thine people of the transient world have need of our light. I really do hope I don't have that. That's what, don't, 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 don't go to work sick, please. I mean, some workplaces are awful about it and they shouldn't be. Because I mean, if one person gets another person sick, even that alone is worth that person staying home. And if you get like multiple people sick, like it's just, even just as a pure super giga capitalist person, it is extremely in your interest to, um, you know, let people stay home and not infect everyone. Oh, it's my Shiro's! Shiro's, that's, um, I follow them on Twitter. I, sh I can't believe I didn't know that. Um, Shiro's does uh, really great pixel art. Let me see if I can find... Crap. I don't know their actual ad. It's a pretty common name. I guess it could be another. I think Shiro is a common one, but not Shiro's. Oh, well, I can't find it. Shiro's is a pixel artist on Twitter who does really great stuff. I think they're working on Pixel Princess Blitz. Fly High Works. I think I've played another Fly High Works game, too. I work with so many games, I uh, kind of... I have the bad memories. I've got the brain damage. Anyway, I hope I'm not sick. That would be bad. Both just in general because sick is bad, but it also makes it very, very hard to do video stuff. <clears throat> something you never really think about until you do something that really involves lots of talking. That like any degree of sickness or even just soreness of throat can completely destroy your ability to, uh, to do things. Oh, and here's something I want to say about 8-bit art. So, you see those mountains in the background? There's three colors per mountain, like, set. But on an actual 8-bit console, there would have to be three or four colors per tile. It's th it's actually four colors, but it's three plus transparency for most sprites and stuff. Uh, so three colors can actually look really good. But the problem is, you see where the green mountains meet the pink mountains? That There would have to be some bleed over of color. And that's where things get really ugly, and things either have to have color bleed, or they have to, you know, split into other... Or, like, they have to be, like, tiles and really ugly. Anyway, you can learn from 8-bit, you know, the good bits of 8-bit, and not keep all the badness. Oh yeah, let me show you the... I almost forgot, but, um... This is a cute little record thing we can get. Oh, uh, menu... Not to erase my data. So yeah, we saved six minutes despite about a minute or two of complete blundering. Uh, we also got all three of the secrets. I think those are like symbols for the developers too, but... You get sushi, you get a burger, you get bird with plum, and regular human Dan over there. And that gives you the uh, little sound test. And the music's pretty good, so it's decent enough. That's not the options. The options are pretty minimal. You can just change your dash button. Japanese, and I believe that's Chinese simplified and not simplified, traditional. Yeah, the music is pretty good. Anyway, that is Kamiko. It's on, I believe it is at least currently a Switch exclusive. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely worse ways to spend five bucks 